Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. We are here in Phoenix, Arizona, Turning Point. I'm with one of my good friends, Jorman. Jordan. Jordan. Sar- <laughs> Jorman. Jorman. Also known as Jordan uh, Sarmiento. And uh, this guy's amazing. The things God's done in his life, it's incredible. I can't wait to get into it. First of all, we connected through worship years yes. ago. We played keys. You played keys with me. We did some worship stuff across America. How in the world did you wind up becoming this activist, uh, sharing these videos that have gone viral across America? How did this journey happen? What illuminated in you? Dude, well, it, it kind of it just fell on my lap back. Well, one last year with COVID. Yeah. All my tours, all the all my trips. First of all, tell them where what, what your history is, what your history back. So yes, yeah, so all the seven years I was on staff at a place called the International House of Prayer. Okay. And then through Kansas the, City, Kansas City, Missouri, Mike Bickle, and um, yeah, I was on staff there. That's where I learned how to become a musician. That's where I learned. That's where I met like guys like you and Stephanie and Amanda and right. Misty and Corey and all those guys. And so that's kind of where I I became a musician. And then through that I. Did yeah? You know, I've been in music, worked in the music industry my whole life. Right. And then moved to Los Angeles and I uh, worked in a lot of music production. But working in LA really opened up my eyes yeah. to. I went through culture shock. Right. It was like whoa. I'm, I was living in this bubble where I think everyone believes the same thing. Right. Everyone's going for the same thing. And then you're faced with something that's literally the complete opposite. You're the minority yeah. in a sense. Yeah. So that was kind of like the culture shock that really woke me up. Like man, this is this is. America really is in need of something more. Right. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, when it, I didn't plan, I've never posted anything politically in my life. I did one time back in 2016, and I was playing for a lot of electronic artists at the time, and I posted one post, and that post literally lost all my gigs from the next three artists. So no like, way. Oh, oh yeah. Experience. What was the post? I, I made that I was, going, I was wearing a Trump hat. I wore, I wore a Trump hat, and I was at a rally, I never posted anything political before, and it was Trump's uh, plane and stuff. But back then, it wasn't that divisive. Like it was, right. you didn't go through the Russia investigation right, or right, any, right, any right, other right, crazy right, stuff. Right. So I was so shocked, like, holy cow, this is nuts. So that was the first, ever then I never- So you posted that post and all these music gigs you just I lost got cut from. Ev- all, oh yeah, not only that, I stopped getting asked to go to certain writing gigs, studio sessions, like that-, that Christians. Uh, I would say about 20% were Christians. Okay. But 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 in LA I was doing a lot of electronic music at okay. the time. Okay. Okay. And so, yeah, you know, that's the first time I truly experienced cancel culture. Wow. Um, but then fast forwarding to 2020, all the gigs, all my touring stopped because we were in lockdown mode. And November 3rd happened, man. And when November 3rd happened, watch the election get stolen, I studied the whole thing, which led me to go to January 6th. And what I saw on January 6th was completely the opposite of when I got back to my hotel and saw the media. Like I was, right. compl- I couldn't believe what, what I was seeing. So you were there on January 6th at the Capitol. I was there. You watched the whole thing go down. I watched the whole thing from, I was at Trump's speech, um, right around 12.02 p.m. He finished his speech. We walked to the Capitol. The time we got to the Capitol, it was just mayhem. Obviously, but there was, it was, the barricades were already down. It was, it was, it was insane. Um, but yeah, and I went on an Instagram live the following day to explain what I saw because there was a lot of bad actors there. And as I started going through my videos, I started seeing literally people, whether they were taking, they were changing clothes, they had microphones, they were like completely there to stir up the crowd. Right. And I didn't realize what I had recorded. And I posted some of those videos, and that vi- those were the videos that ended up going viral. And I got to meet, uh, basically do some research stuff with the Giuliani team a little bit, and that's kind of how I got into the whole political thing. Wow. Yeah. And then you got visited by the FBI. Yeah, and then like a week and a half. <laughs> can we talk about that? Yeah, no, we can. Yeah. We, yeah, we, about a week and a half later. I mean, one of my videos have about a little over two hundred thousand views in about a day and a half, and that was the one that. People were, you know, saying this guy was there, this guy was there. So the FBI showed up my house about a week and a half later. Nice, they were nice. I didn't have, and I know a lot of people had different experiences. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, they showed up to the house and asked if they could see the footage. They said they weren't there for me. I just said, hey, listen, here's my lawyer. Go through them. Never heard from them. It's kind of like uh, the footage is like on my Instagram. Yeah, no, that's like, what I said. No, <laughs> that's literally what I said. 
<laughs> well, it was on my Instagram, but then Instagram deleted it. Yeah. No, that's when I they blocked my account. It was crazy. Right. That was the censorship thing. But I said it's on the Stu Peter show. It's on. Uh, I mean, there was like five different networks that I ended up showing those videos. And so I'm like, if you here's the links. If you want to go see those, those are the ones that you're gonna want to see. Yeah. So yeah, it's been it's been eye opening, man. But I will say like getting involved is I think it's one of the most biblical things that we can do right now yeah. hands down because I think where we are today is because the church has lost its voice right. really has like right. I think progress I think the progressive church has been louder than right. the church itself today right and so I think we are where we are today because we were the silent majority the church didn't want to offend and I think if the church can actually take that back and we can actually be, be, be courageous, speak truth, have pastors help people run for office and get, you know, Christian and spiritual biblical people to actually take over our local governments and our local communities, that's when we're actually going to see really ch change. And so that's like, that's my main focus yeah. with my podcast and my community. Right. So what would you tell people, you know, you spent all these years in the house of prayer yeah. as a worship leader, as a musician consecrated before the Lord. Now you're in this political activist thing, your videos on PragerU and, and all these other things that you're doing. People would say, man, like, like they say to me, like, you just got all political. You just kind of lost your right, way. Right. Da, 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 da. Why are you doing this? Do you ever get that feedback? And oh, what yeah. is your response to that? Oh yeah. I mean, a lot of people think that I'm doing it for clout or they think I, mean, I was called domestic terrorist after Jane. I mean, the whole thing you get, but Honestly, like, I don't get paid for this. Right. I get more flack than I get praise. Like, it's, right. not, it's not like something that I, I wanted to do, but honestly, I, it, like, and it's something that we always say, it's for the future generation. And I wanna make sure that we remain in a free country in a place where right. we have religious liberty. And so I think every single person where we are today needs to get involved in some place. It doesn't matter if you're a lawyer, you're a musician, Wherever I think at some capacity, you need to get involved in a local way because we are where we are today. And we can complain all we want. We can say, you know, we're losing our freedoms. We're losing our freedom of speech. It's like, well, we are, we are, we are where we are today because we did not hold our local politicians accountable to doing their job. And right. I think, I think every person needs to be doing it. And so I don't care if you're a musician or if you, we need regular people that are not political to actually get involved in the civil process again. That's, I think we have, we all have to. So I, I, um, I, I hundred percent agree with you. And, and, you know, just so you know, seeing what you're doing and the things you're going after has brought enormous, uh, encouragement to me to know that, man, there's somebody that, you know, I spent years in the prayer room too, yeah, you know? And, and so I just love it that you're applying you know, a lot of what you gained in the scripture oh, and yeah, in, in the in the secret place with the Lord, and you're 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 being salt and light in this world, which desperately needs it. Yeah. Especially like being here at Turning Point, I, I think a lot of this, to be honest with you, you know, the, the conservative world, a lot of it's a mission field. Oh, dude, it's it is. Oh you yeah. Know? Well, yeah. You you think it's it's interesting. We were talking about this yesterday. Like yeah. when you come here, you think everyone thinks the same, but you have all types of different religions here right. you have atheists you have you have christians you have jews you have all these different religions this is a mission field in itself yeah. um but no i totally agree i think this, the years in the prayer room set me up to be rooted and grounded for the storms that i'm going through right now right. and hands down if it was dude, if it wasn't for that that seven years 40 to 50 hours a week in the prayer room intercessor missionary um, seeing what the Lord did in all the the place, the nations that I went to, like those are the promises that I hold on to, because it not only, not only, it's hard too. It's right. like you lose your faith a lot in, in times when when you're getting beat down, and you you also lose hope when it comes to the country what you yeah. see. And so, but obviously we know the end of the story, man. So yeah, we just gotta we, be, we just gotta be a part of it and say yes. What what is your uh, like as you've seen? kind of the woke agenda you've seen people that have loved the lord have fallen away have have succumbed to the secular progressive left ideology in christian music in worship music in the church um how do you deal with that and and what what is your response to that my res 
my, res well, my response has been what I've kind of done. I've been trying to encourage people to do what I've been doing is really speaking out to it. But, dude, honestly, the, the progressive left church to me is more damaging than than the, the church not saying anything at all. It's, it's, it's scary what where we're going. But we are there, though. The reason why they are controlling the narrative and so many people are falling to that is because the one the ones that really are the ones that are setting for truth are just not speaking out enough. Right. Like that's what I want. And that's why I was so drawn to what you're doing is you're like, man, you have a worship artist that you had the record deal with Bethel. Right. You were you were doing everything that you wanted to do. I mean you've always been a missions guy though. It's all yeah. but you were like, no, I'm I'm gonna take this on the front lines. I am gonna go in front of the Capitol and lead worship yeah. the same way that I do if I'm in a worship set at a conference or at right, a church. Right. And so it takes courage to do that. Yeah. And so but again, I think people don't realize they're not willing to speak up unless they know the end, like the end goal for what's actually happening in our country, which I really believe that we're seeing the Marxists take over our country in so many different ways. And the only thing that can really stop them is one, the Bible, the, the, the gospel, number one, and the number two, Christians getting involved in the local, in the civic process. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's something I always hammer, man. And, 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 what, and what is the correlation to those two things? Like, what do you mean, in what way? Like, so you're a believer, you love the Lord, you know, we call this podcast, Hold the Line. You know, you're, 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 you, 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 you believe in the values and the theology of the Word of God, what we're called to do, the Great Commission, yeah. all that stuff. How is what is the connection from that to the civic responsibility of engaging in well, your it's, mind? It's, well, it's just it's putting people that will represent and implement those values. So, I mean, you want the, you want those that are going to stand for life, right? You know, so those that will stand with and basically implement policies, legislation that will represent biblical values, and put those people in office because yeah. we don't have enough of those people in office and that's why we are where we are today. I mean, that's why our schools, I mean, to think we saw the decline of the education system the moment you took prayer out of school, right. the moment you weren't allowed right. to bring the Bible into school. Right. And that's, that is because God has been removed from everything, not because the left was stronger, it's because the right stayed quiet because right. they were scared right. to offend. They right. were scared to speak truth, man. But yeah. the one thing about the truth, the truth is like a lion and it always defends itself always yeah. defends itself. So all we have to do is speak it. And if we do, and yes, what does that look like? You might be there and like, I don't know what I can do. I only have a thousand followers or whatever. Like post a story, do do little baby <coughs> steps, you know, post, a little, make a post or a tweet, little things like that. Find out, get organized, it. become a precinct committee man. You can go to the school board, find out what your kids are being taught in your schools. Find out, yeah. because I guarantee you when you find <laughs> out, that's where you're going to find your courage. That's where you're going to find your courage. Parents don't, and that's really what happened this past year with COVID. You had all these children and they were being taught at home and the parents for the first time are like, what are these, what are my kids being taught? They're being yeah. taught to hate themselves. Yeah. It's crazy. So. Wow. And, and let's hit lastly, I want to talk for a minute about cancel culture. Of course, you know, I've been, a, a, you know, a oh, victim yeah. of that to some degree. You have uh, shadow own. banning, censorship, all that kind of stuff. How do you fight through that? Because a lot of people are like, well, why does it even matter? Yeah. You oh, know, why does it even matter? It's like, they're just going to cancel it. They're just going to take it down. They're just going to... They are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, censorship is the tool that the left uses right. when the lie loses its power. Right. That, I mean, that's, that's really what's happened. We're seeing that with the mandates. We're seeing that in so many different ways. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Why does it matter? I mean, like, and I always give crap on these big tech platforms, but I also love them because I've met so many incredible people right, through them. Right. It's where we get our impact. Like I saw the other day when you, you posted on Instagram about buying, you know, you want to get some guitars for when you were overseas mm -hmm. for, all, for all the orphans and all the kids in the streets. And boom, you raised up a bunch of money. Yeah. You were able to bring a bunch of guitars yeah. and that's the power of social media. And so I think the main thing, I mean, I think you do have to be smart you got to be wise when you're on these platforms. You can't just say whatever you want to say, but you use these platforms in a way to like get your message out and then figure out ways to get them onto an email list or get them in your Telegram group right, right. and to organize because but really the really the focus needs to be local. It's all got to be on focus on your local community. We always want to think national. Focus on your local community, organize there, create private Telegram groups or DM groups or whatever it is because yeah, we're, we are we have a way higher uphill battle than 
the other side does because of censorship. But, um, dude, the truth is like a lion. Yeah. It'll defend itself. And, and the truth is, is they can't, they can't censor and shadow ban and block everyone. No, they can't. And so, you know, the so more good. people begin to speak out, the more the tide will turn, the more we can see things shift. And, uh, and that, that's what I tell people. That, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I might post a video and it, it'll get shadow banned or it'll get it taken down. But if a thousand people post the same yeah, video, they, they can't control that. Oh, and we, oh, we saw that in so many different cases where independent journalism actually changed. Yes, Virginia. For, I mean, Virginia, yes. Yeah. Loudoun County. Yeah. Like what happened there if, if certain independent journalists or parents didn't show up to the school board and find out what happened in Loudoun County yeah. that is happening in Arizona right now. If, if, if parents showing up and using their voice literally can change the lives of the future generation. And we saw that in Virginia. We saw that, I mean, Minneapolis and Seattle put in a, a Republican city attorney a year after Chaz. A year after Chaz. And the reason why is because people are starting to use their voice again. Right. Everyone has to get involved. Come on. No more complaining. It. What's your optimism for 2022? My optimism for 2022 is, I'll say this, 95% of the people that I've talked to within my community on social media, online, almost all of them, they did not look into politics, care about politics, not until about two years ago. They got red-pilled. They got red-pilled. They got red-pilled or they were already red-pilled, but they are now willing to say something. Right. So I think, and that's why you're seeing the school boards being over flooded. The, yeah. they're, they're having to turn people away because like it's right. too many people. So my optimism is there are, I mean, I was speaking to a girl last night who was, she said she was, she called herself the mini AOC of the left on, in Los Angeles. She was at every protest. She was open borders. She was for Marxist ideologies. And then the lockdowns happened. She lost her business, made her think differently. And now she's here at turning point because she's like, we are losing our country yeah. and I, I need to, we need to keep our freedoms. Wow. She got saved last year. Come on. So, you know, like, that's why I think there is, there is a movement happening and the meat it's, it's hard to uh, fight through the gaslighting of the media and, and the mainstream media and social media, but there is a movement happening. It's stronger than we really think it is. But I'm telling you, the moment you speak up, you're going to draw people to you. You're just automatically people come want on. to be around courageous people. Right. And when you use your voice, people are going to come. You're going to lead, organize, and bring revival and change to your community. Come on. Straight up. I love it. Do it, man. Last question. When are you going to play Keys with me again? <laughs> when are you going to bite me? <laughs> okay, that's it. This is it. I'm, I'm going to title this this podcast, My Keyboard Player. My <laughs> old keyboard player there. is Red Pilled. Dude, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I love it, bro. Seriously. Hey, thanks for coming on. Dude, thanks really, for having me. Really, really. really.